Yesterday, upon the stair, I met a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. I wish, I wish he'd go away. Hello. Today, I'm joined by Mortis Media, and we present to you six true paranormal stories. Once you're finished listening to the three stories on my channel, please visit Mortis Media's channel to hear the final three. Enjoy. Number one, the barn. I was always creeped out by the barn at my grandmother's house. Every summer, my family would go there for about a month and visit. I would always help my grandpa with some chores around the farm. I not only was fine with that, I actually enjoyed doing it. By the time I was 16, I was actually pretty big and was able to help out a lot more around the farm when I was there. It kept me pretty active, and in shape too, since I wasn't able to work out for the month we were there. I played football in high school, so I had to keep in shape. But the one thing I really hated was the barn. I really couldn't tell anyone that it creeped me out either. I mean, my family was all about the men not supposed to be afraid of anything. I guess I have this fuzzy memory of the barn when I was a kid, and that is probably the main reason I had issues with it. My grandma had told me to go out to the barn and tell my grandpa that it was time for dinner. I was about six at the time. I remember running out to the barn and seeing what I thought was my grandpa standing in the loft of the barn in the window. But when I went in to talk to him, he was at his work desk logging something. I asked him, who was up in the window, and he replied that I must have been seeing things since no one was there. Right, it doesn't seem like a big deal to you, I'm pretty sure. It could have been my imagination. It could have been a false memory. Hell, I was six years old. It could have been a shadow. Who knows? But regardless of what it was, it stayed with me, and I really always was scared to death of that barn. Even when I was 16, I felt uncomfortable about the barn. My grandpa was working on his tractor on one bright day, and I was helping him. He was cursing up a storm because he was having an issue finding the right socket. He ended up needing the extension piece for the socket, and he didn't have that with him. So, he asked me to go ahead and run into the barn and look through his tools to see if I could find it. I really didn't want to go into the barn, but I was not about to tell my grandfather that. So I went in and opened the door. I did it cautiously as I was obviously a bit nervous. There wasn't a light by the door, and I had to go to the work table to turn a lamp on. After scanning the barn, looking into all the shadows, I determined that I was alone. So I ran over to the work table and quickly switched on the lamp. I may have been in there for about five minutes, looking for the extension, when I heard a noise. It sounded like something fell over. Turning around, I saw that my grandpa's axe had fallen over on the floor. I didn't think much about it, really. My grandpa used it all the time, and it may have been sitting there rather unsteady. There also wasn't anybody over there, whether shadow person or real person or what. 
I was still a bit unnerved, but not much worse than normal. I turned and began looking for the piece again. My back hadn't been turned for more than five seconds when I heard a sound and that axe hit the wall I was facing. It was as if someone had thrown it across the room and right at me. The blade didn't go into the wood, however. The axe hit the wall, bounced off the table, and landed on the floor. Absolutely terrified, I turned to see who had thrown the axe at me. There was no one in the barn with me. The axe had been hurled towards me, but not by anyone I could see. I ran out of the barn and found my grandpa under the tractor still. I asked him if he had seen anyone come out of the barn. He looked at me like I was crazy and told me no, no one other than me. I explained to him what happened, and the old man rolled his eyes. At first, I thought he was mad at me, but actually, he told me this had happened before with other tools. He said, in fact, about ten years earlier, he had gone into the barn and found his axe embedded in one of the hogs. I asked him why he didn't just get rid of the axe, and the old man looked at me again, like I was crazy, and he just said, you gotta have an axe on a farm. When I told him about the shadow figure I saw as a kid, he just shrugged it off. Lots of weird things happen out in the country, was his only response. I still hate that barn. My friend's sister, Guinevere, was moving out and had to drive her truck from Denver to the East Coast. She stopped in St. Louis on the way to visit friends, leaving their house just before dusk. She started driving in what she thought was the direction of the highway. The skies were getting darker. The street lights were fewer and further between. And she suddenly realized that she was lost. She was in an industrial area now and getting creeped by the fact that no one was really around her. There were, though, railroad tracks which ran behind the rows of empty buildings. Since this was before GPS and decent cell phones, I need to point out the internet existed but was relatively new, she decided to pull over into a parking lot and check her map. So, Guinevere pulls into an empty parking lot she stops, switches on her interior dome light. No sooner she had done that, a young African-American woman appears at the passenger side window, out of nowhere. She said, You need to get out of here. You're not safe. Guinevere went from creeped to seriously nope immediately. She stammered, Uh, thanks, and floored it to the other side of the parking lot where she stopped again to look at the map. Immediately, the young woman was there again, at the passenger side window, and she said again, You need to get out of here! You're not safe! Guinevere tore it out the parking lot and eventually made it safely to the highway. Thank goodness! Two things that especially weirded me out. One, she had two dogs in her truck, not afraid to bark at strangers, and neither of them registered that anyone was outside at that point. It was like no one was there as far as the dogs were concerned. I've always heard that animals have more sensitivity to paranormal things than people do, so that was odd. 2. When the young woman spoke, Guinevere said that she could hear her voice plain as day, even though the windows were rolled up and the engine was running. She heard the young woman, just like you and I would hear someone sitting right next to us. She was so bothered by what happened, 
that she did what she could to search the St. Louis newspapers online to see if anything had occurred in that area. It turned out that a man had been killing women right around there and leaving their bodies near the railroad tracks behind the building where she'd stopped at. Then, he would hide nearby and watch whilst the police and emergency personnel worked the scene of the victims. He had struck again that night, before dusk. She believes to this day that someone, fortunately, was warning her not to linger. Number 3 My story happened when I was now 22. I had a friend who liked to drive at night to relax his nerves. He asked me if I wanted to tag along, and I decided to go. We reached this one patch of road, where it's just a straight away with nothing but forest on either side. The only light coming is from his car. Now it's been about two minutes or so, and we were both singing songs with the radio, when something in the distance catches my attention. Now mind you, it's pitch black, and I see this white speck in the distance. I ask my friend if he can see it too, and what is it? He instantly freaks out, and yells to me to roll up my windows. Freaking out myself, I roll up the window, and nervously focus on the white object. It's as if it's glowing, but it's not a flashlight, or anything like that. As if it was, I would have been able to see the stream of light, and I would have been able to see it moving about, as if someone was walking with it. The speck starts to become clearer, and I could make it out to be someone walking in a white dress. I ask my friend what it is, but I could tell that he's really concentrating on driving. He does tell me to keep quiet and keep looking straight. Not knowing what's going on, I just listen to what he says. The radio is off at this point, and we were about to reach the person walking along the road in the dress. I can now see that she has long black hair and a long white gown. Now, I shit you not, this freaks me out even now as I type this. My hair on my arms and my neck is standing on end as I'm recalling this event. Before we pass her, she jumps in front of the car, and as I yell, Oh shit! Embrace myself for a hit. There is nothing. Nothing at all. Now, what my friend says still sends shivers down my spine and makes my eyes watery. He says, Whatever you do, don't look in the rear view mirror, or look in the back seat. I could feel a presence in the back seat, with a cold sort of aura emanating from the back. We suddenly hear a woman's voice, but I couldn't make out what it was saying. I immediately understand what he means and just close my eyes until I could sense light through my eyelids. We get to a gas station, and we both just sit in the car, as if we were still in shock. It was truly a terrifying experience. Hey all, Killer Orange Cat here. I first want to thank Mortis Media for joining me in this collaboration. 
I really enjoy his videos, and I think you would too. Please visit his channel in the link provided to see the second part of our collaboration. His video will have three paranormal stories, one narrated by me. The story I narrate in his video is a further experience of the gentleman who submitted the third story in this video. I hope that you will enjoy it. Please also subscribe to Mortis Media, he is very talented. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you're not already subscribed to Killer Orange Cat, please hit the button next to my little buddy to be informed of new content. Please also feel free to look in the links below to follow Ichigo and myself on both Facebook and Twitter. Coming up next, we'll be having my collaboration with the Sinful Savant, and a list of cryptids, which will be my collaboration that I'll be doing with my friend Basement Horrors. And please, whatever you do, wherever you go, don't forget to make sure to check in your closet and check under your bed because you never know where a killer orange cat might be hiding. Good night.